Hi everyone, my name is Aurora and I just survived first year computer science at U of T. So today I will be your guide, your genie, your guru, your big older sister, just whomever because I am here for you and I have gained a lot of advice and wisdom over this past year that I did not know going into it last summer but I am telling you this summer. Let us get started because this really is the ultimate guide. We will be exploring your degree option, course selection. And now this is a little bit of a disclaimer because I will be focusing mostly, well, basically only in stream computer science students because I was an in stream student. So that's just what I have most expertise on, how we're actually taught and how we're evaluated in these classes, as well as like how to prepare for these classes before school starts, course load, course content, like what the units are for math and computer science. And also just, I have have a few important resources that I wish I knew way earlier than I did. So just like a general overview, basically at U of T, what you need to do to graduate is basically you have three degree options. You can do a specialist, which is basically just focusing on one area of study, but really intensely. You can do a double major, which is focusing on two areas of study, and you can do a major and two minors. I mean, it's really up to you. So you can do a specialist in computer science, a major in computer science. You can do a minor in computer science too. Right. Okay. So those are the degree options. And now in terms of like actual course selection, if you're in stream, you have three mandatory courses to take in order to make post. These are CSC 110, CSC 111, and Math 137. These are all three classes in breadth requirement five. And now let's just briefly talk a little bit about breadth requirements at U of T. So a breath requirement is U of T's attempt to create more well-rounded adults, I guess. Basically, each course at U of T has a designated breath requirement category, and you can check what these categories are in the Arts and Science calendar, which I will have linked below, and then you can plan your courses according to the breath requirement. And now back to you, Recorded Aurora. You have five of them, and basically the most popular option is that you must take at least one credit in four of these breath requirements. And don't worry because the mandatory co courses that we take first year are all in breath five. So then basically after first year, you are automatically just check mark breath requirement five and you can just focus on like three other ones to take one credit in. Now a little bit of the overview of each of these mandatory classes. For CSC 110, it is a full credit course even though it is a full credit course, you only learn it in one semester. You are expected to take CSE 110 in the fall semester and CSE 101 in the winter semester because 111 builds upon the knowledge of 110. For 111, 110, sorry, excuse me, you must get a 70% in order to make post. And for 111, it is half a credit and you must get a 77% in this course to make post minimum. And for 137, it is a full credit course and you learn it over the course of one year and you must get a 50%. Like all you need to do is just pass this course. Now, in terms of like the class schedule, for 110, it is quite an intensive course. You must take three classes a week and each of these classes are two hours. Plus on top of these classes, a one, two hour tutorial. And for 111, you must take two classes a week and you have one two hour class as well as one one hour class plus a one two hour tutorial. And for 137, you have three classes a week and each of these classes are one hour long plus you have an extra one hour tutorial now you may be wondering what a tutorial was i was wondering that definitely so i think i might be a little bit telepathic here and a tutorial is basically just like a designated time set aside uh, to do practice problems and expand upon what you learned in class and it is supervised with a teaching assistant a ta they're usually like in grad school just very very smart people you will probably get smarter through osmosis are tutorials helpful like in a word yes obviously like they won't make you go to tutorials just to waste your time like they're not they're not evil um they are designed to help you give a better understanding of the test questions 
And in terms of 137, I think the tutorial questions were helpful because they gave you a good idea of like the expectations of your test questions. Like I honestly saw a few test questions in the term tests that appeared in tutorials. As for the 110 and 101 tutorials, I'm just gonna lump them together because CS tutorials are basically the same format. So again, they are helpful, but not everything you learn in a tutorial is gonna be applicable to your real life course. Oh, and also I should mention, tutorials are not marked. They do not count towards your final grade. They are just to supplement your learning in class. So for the CS tutorials, the programming concepts are helpful and they definitely appear on some of the assignments, which are another form of evaluation in the CS courses. But again, like not all of them are. You aren't expected by a professor to like finish all of the tutorial questions. My advice is just to try the tutorial questions and just go to the tutorials if you can, because they are definitely helpful. And like I went to all the tutorials and I made post very, very nicely. So I showed up and honestly just show up basically. I need a drink of water. I'm back. So in terms of actually now how we're taught, for 137, this was a bit of a new learning strategy, I guess, that I was not typically used to in high school. So you're assigned like usually two to three videos to watch beforehand. And these videos are on YouTube. There is actually a YouTube channel for 137, which I will link below. And you basically learn these concepts beforehand. And then in class, because it's only one hour, your professor has like a slideshow of questions and you are just given like five minutes for each question to try on your own first. And then the professor just takes them up. You learn where you went wrong. And yeah, that's how you learn. And in class, you usually do like five to 10 questions to practice on what you learned in the YouTube videos. And now as for how you're evaluated in 137, so you have eight problem sets over the course of the year that you are assigned. Now, what is a problem set? They're basically a package of take home questions and you're usually given more than a week to do these. These questions are designed to be hard thinking questions. Oh, my camera's running out of battery, hold on. We're back. Yeah, the questions are designed to be hard thinking questions that are like really expanding upon the concepts you learn in class. You really should start them early. Like I know you're given a week, but like during the course of this week, you are definitely going to be assigned other tasks in your other classes. So each of these questions, like honestly, I think for me, the average was like two to three hours minimum <laughs> to figure out. And each of these problem sets usually have like six to eight questions. So definitely, definitely start them early. But the good news is that out of these eight problem sets, you drop your two lowest. So really only your six highest marks count. On top of these eight problem sets over the course of the year, you are also going to be given four term tests. And each of these term tests cover like two or more units that you learned in class. And you usually have a term test every two months, I think. And also the good news is your worst term test is dropped. So only three of your highest term tests marks count. Lastly, you have one final 137, which covers everything that you learned in 137, like all 14 units. Now for CSC 110 and 111, I'm going to lump them together because at least for me, taught by the same professor, Professor Batter, and he used the same teaching style in both these classes. So I'm just going to group them together. For these classes, there is a website for CS students and basically they're the course notes for this class. Like everything you are taught in class are also in the course notes, but the course notes are like more in depth and more detailed and like arguably better explained because sometimes the professor runs out of time. So I recommend like looking at the course notes before class or after class just to like keep the information more fresh. Right. So like this is outside of class, but like actually in lecture, the professor has like a slideshow that you can download on your tablet or if you don't have a tablet, you can print them out. Now, aside from these slideshows, you also have practice exercises that you download beforehand to do in class. Basically, each class, it's like the professor goes through the slides, like five or six, and then he's like, okay, class, I taught you this concept. Now go to the exercise questions and try it. I will give you like five to 10 minutes to try it on your own. After this 10 minute, the professor just takes up the question. You're like, oh, that's where I went wrong. Okay, I understand now. So that's basically the format of in class. Okay, now as for how you're actually evaluated in the CS courses, it's just slightly different between 110 and 111. So 
So in 110, you are given four assignments over the course of one semester. You are usually given more than one week to work on this again, but I recommend you start early because it usually took me and my partner like one week to do it. This is because we also usually had problem sets and assignments back to back, so it was stressful or fun to juggle these assignments but anyway plus one midterm and one final project which builds upon like all the programming concepts you learned over the semester each week in 110 and 111 you are given a like weekly to do which was a practice quiz that you do on Quirkus don't worry like you get unlimited attempts to do this quiz so everyone got perfect and also like, basically a starter file with homework questions just like functions for you to implement according to their doc strings and you are expected to do this over the course of the semester and for 111 it's just only a little bit different. You are given three assignments to do over the course of one semester instead of four. You have one midterm, and now instead of the final project, you have one final exam, and it's on everything that you learned. Now, a little bit on how to prepare like before school actually starts because I think we want to just give ourselves confidence, just the confidence that comes with knowing what to expect in the school year. Okay, so for how to prepare for 137. So I did this a little bit, which is just go to a YouTube channel and just start watching video. Take out a notebook or download good notes. Wait, no, don't use good notes. I'm a notability girl. And just take notes on Alfonso's video, like especially unit one and two were really steep learning curves for me because like now on top of numbers and letters, you also use the Greek alphabet and like all these new symbols that I wasn't used to in high school calculus. So definitely just watch the first two units just basically just go to the youtube channel i have it linked down below and start watching and for 110 and 111 i'm not actually sure if you can access this website i'm pretty sure you can though but just like read the course notes they're designed to teach you from scratch like even if you have no programming experience so like start reading the course notes it will definitely build up a good foundation for you because you learn python in first year now in terms of the course load now this is just like a rough approximation in terms of me but for 137 i usually spent like 5 to 11 hours every week studying like outside of class just to like review the concept and this includes like me doing some of the questions from the tutorials outside of the tutorials like me trying the problem set questions and like me just reviewing the slides that we learned in class after class and for 110 this was another 5 to 11 hours same thing it was like me doing the weekly exercise problems me reading the course notes me doing the weekly quiz and just me reviewing the comps like the slideshows after class like this is what the 5 to 11 hours is spent on and for one-on-one -on -one, it was a little bit less it was like 4 to 10 hours because it was a little bit of a lighter course load than 110 and in terms of what you learn <laughs> You learn some pretty like cool stuff, I guess, along the way. Like you learn time management and you learn prioritization because it's like not really possible for you to do like literally everything that you're assigned. What you learn is like how to get help in a lecture full of hundreds of other students and you only have one professor. So like this professor is not going to be probably like your high school teacher who is like your main go-to person for asking questions. Your main go-to person is actually I think going to be your TAs because in your tutorials you don't always have to ask like about the tutorial questions and in tutorials it's like much smaller groups so that's like you know much more quality time with your ta and also like ask your peers because they are super duper smart there are really some people that surprise me with like how selfless they are and their knowledge like they took time out of doing their own work to help you and as for what you actually learn and i will list it on the screen I don't think I have enough time to go into it in depth, but basically if you read the course notes for the CS courses and watch some of the YouTube videos, you will definitely understand the course content. And now just like important resources for incoming students. <laughs> My number one resource is the Math Learning Center and what it is, is heaven. Basically, it is a room, I think in the student commons, it's a room full of teaching assistants. You just go in and ask whatever math questions and they will sit down with you like one to one. It's like QMOM and just answer the question until you understand. And you could definitely go to the math learning center with your problem set questions too. Like they won't tell you the answer, but they will guide you onto the right path. 
Another important resource is the professor's office hours. Usually not a lot of people are there anyway. So again, you get that quality like small group time. Ask your professors one-to-one. -one. And it's a really good way for them to get to know you. Good like that they know your name for like a recommendation later on or like if you want to be their teaching assistant. So basically that is all I have to say about how to make first year in stream computer science post. I really hope you guys found this helpful because this is what I have to figure out for myself through bits and pieces of asking different people. But now you're getting it all in one place. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you found this useful and if you have any questions make sure just to leave a comment. I will definitely make sure to answer them to the best of my ability. Okay, so that's it. Thank you for watching. Goodbye! And I wish you all the best of luck, you know, your futures at CS. Yeah. Oh, my leg is numb.